Well, did you know that California is considered one of the hotbeds for sex and labor human trafficking? Even more shocking, numbers of people are being bought and sold in our own backyard along the 101 freeway in Ventura County. Now, fortunately, there are dedicated people and agencies working to end the problem. Joining me today is Eric Sternod, Executive Director of Interface Family and Children's Services in Ventura County, and Tony Skinna, a human trafficking and modern day slavery expert. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Tony. Well, you, um, let's start with you, Tony, and the global aspect of human trafficking. How bad of a problem is it, and are you surprised it's moved to the local level? Not at all actually because pretty much it's in every country in the world and uh, it's got to start on the local level and grow from there. So um, it's a problem that's growing exponentially and needs to be tackled in various kind of strategies in order to try and overcome this mass massive problem. And the right? billions of dollars in, in this it's, I mean, it's estimated at $150 billion. All right. We're watching some of the PSA that you produced to raise awareness about right. sex trafficking and human trafficking. Now, Eric, let's talk about the, uh, the 101 corridor through Ventura sure. County. You think of Cambodia, Ukraine, something like that, yeah. but you don't think about Ventura County, the 101. How did you find out this was a problem? Yeah, it is shocking to realize this is happening in our own backyard. Interface has been providing domestic violence shelter for many years, and we started to see a couple of years ago human trafficking victims coming through our domestic violence shelter. Mm. And so we got together with other partners, the uh, DA's office, local law enforcement, even Homeland Security. We started to look at how can, how can we combat this issue in, in our community. And what can you do? Locally. Well, you know, I think uh, we, we have um, a shelter uh, available. There are treatments available for the trauma that these, that these victims are experiencing. But I think what we need to do first as a community is recognize this is happening. Mm -hmm. And then let's, uh, let's look for ways, w if we see something that looks suspicious, uh, say something, and then we can get law enforcement involved. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, Tony, maybe you can speak to that. What sort of signs should people look for um, to maybe they su suspect something or maybe the victims? Yeah, I mean, there are obvious signs like, um, you know, avoiding eye contact. Uh, uh, you know, you can see a person who is, um, you know, uh, quiet, um, trying to avoid anything public, mm -hmm. stressed, sweating. Um, you know, I read a report on the UK, for example, the amount of potential victims coming in mm -hmm. through those borders and uh, and they're undetected, right? And the same thing's happening here. And uh, those tell, so telltale signs really need to be um, explored and, and uh, law enforcement needs to be educated on them as well as NGOs. Right. Yeah. Well, we barely touched the surface of this and unfortunately it's always a short, quick interview, mm -hmm. but we need to have you back and talk more about this problem and sure. what, we can, what can be done. But in the meantime, we do have some information that you can get along the lines of see something, say something. There's a hotline to report any suspicious activity or if you suspect someone is a victim, you can always call 211. Check out interface at icfs.org and find out more about Tony Skinner's work at TonySkinner.com. I know you do all kinds of things. So nice to have you gentlemen. Appreciate you being mm -hmm. here. Thanks, Thank you. Right, thank you. Thank you.